Our next question, Jim, sent to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from a parrot. <laughs> Hi, Jim and Brian. Hello. I'm a parrot from Italy. I was a huge Coco Beware fan during his WWF run, and I started watching wrestling again during this recent human pandemic. <laughs> Since I can't always watch WWE and AEW show with the volume up, I have a condition that forces me to repeat every word I hear. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you, who are the best and worst promo guys nowadays and why? That chubby featherless penguin seems to get huge reactions. Please answer. Typing really hurts my beak. Thank you, a parrot. <laughs> All righty then. Well, I think we've we've said Heyman is just is uh, a step above. Punk is so good. Um, well, let's just MG let, let's start with WWE so you don't get thrown off. Who are the best people in WWE beyond Heyman? Do you consider Reigns a good promo or a great promo? Um, I don't. I haven't seen enough to say great. He doesn't go on you know, four or five minute tangents. He's not the guy that's going to go out there and just, you know, be John Cena and just take over the room or the rock or whatever. But he delivers everything that he says realistically. And he doesn't say anything that it doesn't look like if he was who he was purported to be that he wouldn't say. So he's very good, but I don't know if I could say great when you're, you know, when you're comparing bodies of work and just people's ability to Heyman or punk or MJF. Uh, I don't know anybody else in the, who else in the WWE? I mean, Cena's of that level. He's gone now. Rock, obviously Austin, who else in the WWE right now verbally stands up to any of the guys I just mentioned. MVP is an excellent MVP is excellent on a mic, but again, stature, too, you have to think about in terms of, well, I shouldn't even say that. If he's great on a mic, he's great on a mic. Yeah. MVP is great on a mic. I don't know if Edge is great on a mic or not. <sighs> Seth Rollins isn't. I know that. Oh, come on now. Poor, don't beat up poor old Seth Stalin again. Um, I'm just trying to think of another person in that company that... I really look forward to hear talking. Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch. There you go. Becky Lynch, very good, for reasons that we mentioned on the show here a week or two ago. AEW has multiple people I like to hear talking. Unfortunately, they're just, you don't hear from a lot of them very often, although that's starting to change now. Um, MJF gets to speak more than, than uh, he was there for a while when he was being inundated sandbags. with with sandbagged by Jerabloat. um you know so with with AEW again you know MJF is the usual suspect and Punk has been tremendous Brian Danielson just has that he Danielson has that natural like Bruno. charisma like Bruno that even he when he you put him in a preposterous position he comes off as like a real person and he's reacting legitimately that's how he's gotten over and treaded so many waters bad booking waters um taz taz is good and it a uh, brit baker yeah brit baker you know she's doing a great job so there there are great talkers and you don't have the the scripted, the memorization, the the blank staring eyes while a memorized communication is being recited in AEW as bad as you, nearly as bad as you have in the WWE because WWE has a bunch more writers that'll get mad at you, if, at you if you don't say every word exact. So those promos are almost all garbage. AEW, as a result of not having writers, it's sometimes feast and sometimes famine, depending on who's doing it. But at least it doesn't sound so, it doesn't sound so phony, but a lot of times when the guys talk, they, it sounds phony because of the things they're saying or the preposterous shit they're in. But if you get the guys that like, as we said, like punk or like MJF or like some of these people that not only 
somehow seem to cull out the foolishness and stick to the to the straight business, but also mean what they say. You know, that's a that's a great combination. Can Alex Marvez be the worst promo? Or because he's the interviewer, does he not count as the worst promo? Oh, I, well, I forgot they did mention the worst also, and boy, there's a there's a buffet. Um, Marvez can't be the worst promo because he's not doing a promo; he's doing a memorized line or two pitch to a a promo. It's just that it's so obviously not real. He's he's either scared to death. He doesn't know how to put inflection in his voice. He, I don't know what the fucking thing is. But uh, who is the worst promo? I mean, you know, we we asked the question a few weeks ago. Andrade, Oof. hola, Andre, oli, oli, o. Um, do you under if you speak Spanish, do you have a clue what he's saying, or is he mush mouthed in both languages? And what was the answer we got that it would it was better in Spanish, but it wasn't a fucking Anything to write home about in either language? I mean, God. <sighs> hey, what do you think of Cody after what we just saw? Do you think Cody's a good promo or does that disqualify him? The fact that everything well, is rehearsed and workshopped? No, but just the fact that he can get an entire sentence out without sounding like it's a hostage statement puts him ahead of half the WWE. Um, as far as be, whether, he, whether he wrote it, whether somebody else wrote it for him, whether he memorized it or read it off the side of a fucking bus, he, the delivery and, and just pronouncing the words right, still better than a lot of these guys. I, I hesitate to say who the worst is in the WWE because of the writer issue. You don't know what guys would sound like if they were actually doing wrestling promos as themselves instead of this horrible childish material and being expected to be actors in AEW again you know they've got Mark Sterling managing poor old Jane Cargill I don't believe anything he says because he's playing wrestling manager but at least he can he can get the words out because he's a glib fellow he probably is in sales in his real life in some way um who do you think sucks worse Sucks the worst or the worst of the... Sucks worst. Sucks worst. Uh, who is, who's the shittiest? Seth Rollins drives me crazy. Matt Jackson really sucks. Um, Matt Hardy. I'm not a Matt Hardy fan, so I'm not really a fan of his promos either. They're just very pro-wrestling promo to me, and I don't mean that in a good way. I mean that, like, the same kind of shit when he submitted it as, like, the fan in WCW in 92 or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Who else is really bad? Um, it, then it's not pro wrestling like Vince uses as a derogatory term. It's it's more like people playing pro wrestler, and you don't want to hear that on your wrestling show. All right. Well, there it is. The best and worst promos today. We answered nothing. We hope you uh, appreciated that answer. Let's get another well, I question. Well, you know, it's a whole lot easier to say who are the best than it is to who's the worst, because then it just comes down to taste, because almost nobody's any good these days. You know, if you remember when FTR were on the show a long while back, right before they went to AEW, you brought up the fact, you know, everyone talks about Jim Cornette and FTR because they think they need a mouthpiece. And if you remember, they jumped in and said... No, 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 we can talk. We've never been given any chance at yeah. all to talk in the last several weeks since Cash got hurt and we finally got a fired up promo. They've been given time to talk and they've been impressive. You think maybe Tony said, well, the fucking guy almost bled to death in my shitty ring, so maybe I ought to put him on TV a little more often. I think he probably regrets the way they've been used somewhat and he realizes they are the best in-ring team. They get great matches out of everyone they're working with and it's nothing that insults anyone and I think they may be used a little better, but we'll see. Well, then, then here's a booking lesson now because I've, the curse of being a great worker and a lot of the veterans would say this constantly. I've heard this numerous times. If you're a fantastic worker and everybody that you get in the ring with has their best match with you, unless you are figured in, the tendency will be to beat you because of all, because of that talent. So when you get someone who is capable of doing that, elevating everybody, the first thing you do is get them over and let them win and have, and they have accomplishments. And then when they have a level of cachet with the audience, 
then you start in a hesitating fashion, not just doing it whole hog, but you start letting them do a job every now and then for someone else to elevate them as well. And if you trickle that out over a long enough period of time, you don't destroy all the goodwill that they had saved up with all of their victories. And at the same time, you get other people over. That's the balancing act, which uh, again, a lot of people don't seem to get these days. And in AEW, we've seen an element of coming in on top and, and your trajectory points you straight to the middle rather than the other way around. So that's something that you need to do before you can let your talented worker make everybody else look like goddamn Bret Hart made Tom McGee look. Uh, you got to get that Bret Hart over first. <laughs>